Morning everybody, uh, Vaped Crusader here. Um, just um, a small video um, about the uh, about the origins of vaping. Um, I thought you might be interested in. Um, vaping actually is is um, not quite as recent as um, as many would have you believe. Uh, in fact, um, vaping was uh, was invented uh, originally by by God. Um, the reason he he did this, of course, was that. Um, he was looking, uh, looking for a way to uh, to carry on with his kind of floaty, floaty thing, and uh, realised that you know he needed to um, to sit on some clouds, and so uh, he invented the uh, the e-cigarette. I mean, he was he was quite pleased with himself. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can find the right one. Um, yeah, he, he he was quite um, pleased with himself. So so he invented uh, the first um, e-cigarette. Uh, he called it the uh, IntelliSig because uh, he figured it was pretty good and that he was pretty kind of clever. Um, unfortunately for him, the, um, the IntelliSig didn't actually produce that much vapor. As you can see, and Took uh, quite a few priming tokes to get it going, um, but you know it was enough for him. So uh, you know he had his clouds to sit on, and, and, and that was fine. Um, he then, of course, invented uh, Adam, um, and uh, Adam was was given an IntelliSig. Um, I mean, of course, if you're God, you've got a really kind of strong drawing action, but uh, Adam didn't really get on that well with the IntelliSig. Um, so you know, God God gave him some some more disposable e-cigs to try, and he didn't really get on that well with them either. Um, in fact, Adam was kind of getting a bit a bit bored, really. Um, there wasn't that much to do. I mean, he had some fruit to eat, and um, obviously some some small small animals to to have sex with. But uh, decided that um, he'd really rather like somebody a bit more like him to have sex with. So. Uh, so God, of course, at this point, um, invented Eve. I mean, he thought Adam was getting a bit, a bit whingy, but um, you know, he, he gave him, he gave him Eve. You know, he thought that was fair enough. Um, couldn't just create Eve, unfortunately. He did, he did have to take take one of Adam's ribs out uh, for for that. Um, <coughs> nevertheless, um, there, there Adam was. He, he had uh, he had Eve. And um, and he had his e-cigs and you know loads of fruit and lovely stuff. Um, then of course God gave Adam and Eve both uh, free will and uh, a big box of stuff uh, in the middle of this uh, garden that uh, that He'd created for them. Um, now the box of stuff, of course, was was full of all the stuff um, that. Um, you know, they couldn't have. Um, for Adam, there was uh, a large group of nymphomaniac 23-year-old bikini models, um, a very large Ferrari, um, and um, tobacco cigarettes, amongst other things. And of course, Eve had um, a large Caribbean lover, um, one of those very uh, attractive um, rabbit vibrator devices um, and uh, a big uh, a big bathtub full of money to swim around in. So they both had these kind of temptations in the way and then you know God thought it would be most amusing to give them uh, free will as well. So that was it really, he kind of left them to it and uh, you know they, they carried on for a while sort of having sex with each other and eating apples and and, and vaping um, you know some not very good disposable e-cigarettes and after a while you know Adam, Adam decided there's got to be more than this you know um, he was quite attracted by the by the bikini models and the Ferrari of course as was Eve to to the vibrator and the uh, large Caribbean lover but what they were both 
mostly interested in really was um, was the idea of smoking tobacco cigarettes. I mean, this had to be better than than nasty disposables, which uh, you know weren't giving them any real satisfaction. So of course they opened the box of stuff. I mean, God did try this uh, box of stuff thing later on with uh, with another girl, um, Pandora, I think her name was. It didn't turn out very well there either. But um, anyway, so they opened um, they opened the box of stuff and um, they got their tobacco cigarettes and uh, that was great. You know, they enjoyed that. Um, but uh, you know, God wasn't very happy because uh, although you know, he'd given them free will and the box of stuff. Uh, and, you know, really created a situation which, you know, it was surely for God, at least reasonably foreseeable, that they would go in the box of stuff. Um, but nevertheless, uh, he was uh, pissed off about that, and so uh, he sent them out of the Garden of Eden uh, into, um, I think it was downtown Los Angeles, um, Anyway, it was it was a pretty pretty scary place out there. Um, so off they went with their uh, with their e cigs and their Ferraris and their bikini models and Caribbean lovers and so on. And uh, you know, for a while, everything everything was fine. Um, they introduced uh, all of the people that they met. Um, presumably, they must have bred them. Who did they have sex with? Um, Anyway, the Bible's a bit fuzzy on that, don't worry about that part. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yes, they, lots of other people came along and um, you know they, they'd gone forth and, and multiplied, did that very well. Um, and uh, they introduced a lot of other people to smoking tobacco cigarettes. Now, this of course wasn't, wasn't God's intention all along. I mean, he, he just put it there as a temptation. He really wanted vaping to take off, but... Uh, the problem with vaping is that uh, the the initial um, offering, the the disposable cigarettes out there, they just really weren't very good. Um, there was there were a few vapors, you know, but but most people thought that smoking tobacco was was much better. So anyway, God wasn't you know very happy with this, and he he tried to sort of work out what he was going to do about it. So um, he figured if he made the whole world wet, then um, all of the lighters uh, and matches and um, tobacco cigarettes would, would, would go out, be useless and be rendered redundant and so on. So he sent down <coughs> a great flood which, um, which did wipe out uh, all, the, all the tobacco products and the means of lighting them. Um, he had unfortunately left out of his calculations um, flying things. Uh, that can smoke, and and a couple did uh, escape. Actually, uh, there were there were eagles, um, smoking eagles, uh, who were able to carry their tobacco cigarettes up to caves and you know keep them dry and so on halfway up mountains, very tall mountains, obviously to to escape the flood, um, and um, uh, there was a, another bird that actually did rather rather well, um, the, the the phoenix. Um, now the, the phoenix actually is, is a kind of s strange, strange um, example. I mean, this bird, um, you know, was smoking tobacco cigarettes for years and years, you know, and his, his health didn't seem to be suffering. He, he just seemed to be getting away with it. Uh, and what's more, you know, he, he took it back to his nest every night, which was, you know, made of twigs and just normal flammable nest type stuff. Um, and he used to keep, um, you, you know, cinnamon in there and myrrh and various things to kind of uh, keep his nest smelling nice, to kind of fight off this sort of um, smoking tobacco kind of odour. Um, but you know, he got away with it. Uh, for some reason, uh, his health never deteriorated. Uh, he lived on and on and on. Uh, his nest never caught on fire. And, and in fact, he lived for um, uh, for 500 years. But... Uh, on on his 500th birthday, uh, he was kind of having a bit of party and all his friends around and so on. And, um, you know, they were all smokers, of course, um, smoking eagles and other smoking flying things that escaped um, the Great Flood there. Uh, <coughs> unfortunately, 
the party got a bit kind of out of hand uh, and the nest got uh, got set on fire. Uh, everyone managed to escape, unfortunately, apart from the poor phoenix. So uh, he, he died uh, on, on his fifth, 500th birthday. A very, very sad thing. Uh, all his friends mourned him, you know, and they were looking at the at the sight of uh, the poor phoenix in his house, burnt, burnt to ashes. Um, but, you know, the story did end did end quite well because um, the phoenix kind of came back to life and and, and off he went. Uh, and it was in this way, um, with the phoenix and um, and the eagle and, and other flying smoking things, that um, the tobacco products, unfortunately, were were preserved. And so, um, when men started to uh, to breed again, uh, those tobacco products were still available. Um, being sold mostly by uh, by phoenixes and, uh, and and eagles and so on, which uh, of course explains the prevalence of those kind of images on uh, tobacco products over the years. Uh, all of this is, is absolutely true, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so that's going on quite nicely. Um, we've got uh, some people still vaping, you know, not very good e-cigarettes, um, but most people most people smoking um, and God thought well you know I tried the flood thing what what, am, what else am I going to do you know so <coughs> he he, uh, he decided to send his son uh, down down to earth um, and you know he did give his son you know strict instructions he said you know don't don't mess about with these people you've got to tell them it's 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 vaping and not smoking you know it's a question of it's a question of faith um, and, and indeed, you know, if you if you read uh, Matthew ten, verse thirty four, you'll see that uh, uh, Jesus didn't come um, with uh, nice, kind, cuddly words. He didn't come with the pen. He didn't come to persuade. He came with a sword. He came to turn uh, a man against his son and a mother against their daughter in law, and so on. Um, so you know, he was quite evangelical about uh, about the whole thing and uh, so it's it's not just me it's not just vapors uh, today i mean people have been evangelical about um, switching people over to to vaping for for many many years um now you know jesus was doing quite well he was converting quite a few people over to um over to vaping but um the main work was done later actually by by St Paul, who um, just basically got on his horse and uh, and rode round, you know, door to door, pretty much persuading people that uh, that vaping was the right was the, was the way to go. Um, there was limited success at first because, uh, as I said earlier, the the quality of the e-cigarettes just wasn't really very good. But um, fortunately, um, fortunately, Christ had. Um, uh, Taken, he'd, he'd thought of all this, and um, what he decided to, to do, in fact, is uh, I mean, he had St. Paul kind of doing, doing his thing, but um, he also decided that, um, that he, he needed to kind of create a new brand because these, these disposables just, I don't know, weren't catching on. Um, so he charged um, St. Peter uh, with, this, uh, with this job. And uh, that's when, of course, St. Peter set up uh, his uh, e-vaping company uh, called Rock. Um, and again, as I say, all of this is, is absolutely uh, gospel truth. So we've now got some, some decent e-cigs out there, and, uh, and, and that's great. And, uh, you know, over a period of time, uh, other manufacturers uh, sprung up uh, the vaping word, um, spread all across the world um, and uh, lots of other suppliers came along um, but uh, still somehow it wasn't really kind of catching on quite as well uh, as it could um, we wind on a few centuries now to uh, the 17th century um, when we get to the um, the French philosopher Descartes now um, Descartes was, was a, an avid, an avid vapor, um, and you know he used to sit around basically uh, as philosophers do, you know, all day just thinking about stuff, 
Um, how can I really be sure I'm here? How can I be sure that my eyes aren't deceiving me? How can I be sure I'm not in a dream, that I'm being deceived by an evil demon and, and that sort of thing? Um, anyway, he, he, he worked out eventually that um, uh, if, he was, if he was thinking, uh, then, um, you know, he must, he must exist. Um, and, of course, what he, what he then needed to do, though, was, was to work out whether other, other stuff um, existed. Um, I mean, he, he didn't want to um, stop it just working out that he existed. How, he, he needed to prove that, that everything else existed. Um, he, looked, he looked down at um, uh, his e-cig. Um, I mean, because because he he was uh, famous, Descartes for uh, you know putting forward the proposition that um, he might um, he might be be dreaming, he might be imagining the stuff that he's seeing. Uh, he was the one that that actually invented um, Mirage e-cigarettes. Um, although whether he screwed a rock cartomizer into it, I'm not uh, not entirely clear about that. Anyway, Descartes went around, and you know he's trying to convince everybody to to switch to to vaping. Um, and you know, people would say to him all the time, um, you know, why why have you why have you switched to vaping? And and he and he said, you know, I've, I've worked out that I think, um, and it seems obvious to me that anybody that thinks uh, about um, about smoking and vaping, you know, is bound is bound to switch to to vaping. Um, and this, of course, is when uh, is when he came up with his second very famous um, saying. I think pretty much as famous as the first, uh, "Cogito ergo vapo." I think, therefore, I vape. Uh, and yes, as I say, all of this is true. Check it out. Um, anyway, so Descartes had uh, he had a friend uh, in London um, called um, Tommy Hobbes. Now, Tommy Hobbes was another philosopher, and Descartes used to kind of bounce ideas off him. You know, he'd he'd kind of write a book, and then he'd send it to Tommy and say, "What do you reckon?" And Tommy would say, "Well, come on, that bit's rubbish, isn't it?" And and Descartes would just kind of um, ignore it and publish it anyway. But anyway, they were they were good mates, and um, Descartes went over to see. Uh, Tommy in London, um, and they used to go out, you know, regularly around to uh, all the London spots and um, try and convert people to, to, to vaping. Um, you know, Descartes tried his arguments, which you know he thought were he thought were logical, um, uh, but you know, a, a lot of people were very set in their ways and they just wouldn't switch to, to vaping. Um, Tommy Hobbs, in the meantime, was kind of observing all this, and uh, he thought, well, the only way really that, that I'm going to be able to convert people to vaping is, uh, is by observing them. What, what is it? Um, what is it about smokers that, uh, that, why do they want to keep smoking when vaping seems such an obvious thing to do, you know, save your life, save a load of money, etc. Um, so he observed, he observed smokers. Now, what um, what he found was that smokers um, tended not to have very many friends um, because you know they they stank as smoke, so um, they tended to spend a lot of time on their own. So that wasn't very good. Um, he also noticed that smokers tended to not to have very much money. Um, because of course, you know, smoking tobacco products costs a fortune. Um, what, are the, what other observations did he have? Um, I, I mean, it was it was clear to him that of course uh, smoking was just a, a nasty, nasty little habit, um, and you know it tended to be undertaken mostly by um, persons of uh, how he would think of it of um, the the lower social orders, um, brutes really, frankly. 
Um, and after further observation, he, he uh, also noticed that smokers didn't tend to live very long. So, anyway, yeah, he used to go out uh, with Descartes, as I say, around um, London and um, following his observations, you know, Descartes tried, tried his, logical, um, his logical arguments with people. Um, but uh, actually Descartes, uh, you know, his, his efforts really were outstripped by, by Tommy Hobbes um, because he, he found it very easy after having observed smokers to, to convince them that, uh, that if they carried on um, smoking um, tobacco products, their lives were, were going to be um, solitary, um, poor, uh, nasty, brutish and short. So uh, yes, of course, that, uh, as we know, has, has gone down uh, in history as well. So there's a long and, and very rich history of, of, of vaping there. Um, I mean, they, they weren't very popular, to be honest, Hobbes and, uh, and, and Descartes. I mean, you know, you're, you're never very popular, really, when you're saying to people you're doing a silly thing, you should be doing a clever thing. And, uh, you know, to be honest, they used to kind of get drunk and they used to pick up prostitutes and they were always getting in fights and it just, it, it really wasn't, um, it, it really wasn't very, very satisfactory at all. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, De Descartes really was the one who, he, he kind of used to, to wind, to wind people up. Um, and so whenever, whenever they went out uh, and picked up their prostitutes, um, Tommy Hobbs quickly worked out that, uh, he should always let the prostitutes go in first because, uh, of course, it's always uh, it's always a mistake to um, to put Descartes before Descartes, as as we know. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that all sort of carried on, and um, yeah, gradually, you know, people kind of switched over to vaping and uh, and so on, and then. Um, you know, we get to the situation, you know, roughly where we are now. We've got uh, lots of people vaping uh, in America and uh, and Britain and Europe and all over the world, really, catching on slowly in other places as well. But um, gradually, you know, vaping is is taking over the, the world, all, of course, through the initial efforts of, uh, of uh, God in the first place and afterwards Jesus and later Descartes and, and Hobbes. Um, now we're at the situation, it seems, where, you know, we have to think, well, you know, what's going to happen next? I mean, ultimately, uh, if this whole vaping thing catches on, um, what are tobacco companies going to do? Well, they're, they're either going to get into kind of e-cig products or they're going to go out of business, I would have thought. Um, this, is a, this is a tidal wave uh, and they, you know, they need to jump on board, it seems to me. Um, so... Yeah, tobacco companies, that's what they've got to do. Uh, pharmaceutical companies, you know, that's a tricky one. I mean, <coughs> pharmaceutical companies, of course, make tons of money every year uh, selling nicotine replacement therapy, you know, what do they call it? Um, gum and patches, I mean, you, me, I mean, we've all tried this. <coughs> the hit rate uh, for um, NRT is, is really low. I mean, uh, I've seen figures as low as, as 2%, you know, what I mean by that is that, you know, after so many months, I think it was about 18 or 20 months or something, only 2% of people who tried NRT stayed off smoking, the other 98% went back. Now, if you, if you have a look uh, around the internet and on forums like UK Vapors and so on, you'll see that, um, in fact, you know, most people who, who vape, um, you know, or of the people who vape, there are a large number, I'm, I'm one of them, that uh, have not smoked for a much, much, much longer time than that. And of course, the reason for that is that vaping, as we know, emulates smoking. It's like smoking. Um, it gives you all the satisfaction that smoking gives you without all the carcinogens at, uh, at a fraction of of the price. So whichever products you decide to buy, um, switching over to vaping is, for me, um, a pretty straightforward decision and uh, I hope it's one that you make as well. Thank you.